so sexy, she's covered in gold from me. Her silhouette's so strong Says everything wrong right Her silhouette's so strong Says everything wrong uh, uh, One of your songs and I think as far as I've understood from your online concert that you wrote it, I don't know exactly the name, but it starts with like, I would do everything for you, my love. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> um, okay, this is awesome. Slick wrote that song. It's called um, Shining Star. I would do everything for you, my love. So yeah. Okay. So you repeat this line quite a few times throughout the song. So what is the biggest thing that you have done for love ever? Um, I think... Well, so far, so far, I mean, there's probably like a married couple will tell you like they've done every, they've done the most. But I think for me, it's traveling. Traveling, definitely traveling, and also like spending insane amounts of money for someone's health. Yes. Oh my. <laughs> well, so relatively nice. insane amounts of money, relatively. <laughs> I hope everything ended up well, and the money you were worth. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in another interview, you mentioned that you wrote "Gingerbread Man" for about a girl. So was the song also about the same girl or maybe another girl or a guy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, it was about a girl. I was um I was 19 and this girl was 24. Mm. Yeah. You know, she was um she was visiting and she was Belgian. So she was it was like a summer, it was like a summer fling. And uh, when she left, I literally wrote that song in a day. When she left, oh, I just, wow. I just, I sat down on my, uh, on the, the floor of the house and just, I was thinking about the moments we had like shared, like the, the first line is double O's and I don't know what. So that double O's is actually for 007. She mm -hmm. got me a perfume in the shape of, got me a perfume of 007 in the shape of like a James Bond thing. So I was literally recanting moments, double O's, I don't know what, alleyways and backdoor hideaways when we'd be out at night. Um, we are dawn and you're dawn. Yeah, yeah, I was just describing it, you know. Um, and they can catch me, I'm the ginger man. I've been transformed by all your ginger kisses. That, that has to do with... Uh, so after a night out, we'd go to the service station but I think you guys call it the gas station. And we'd buy uh, ginger beers. They're um, stony, so we'd buy them. And yeah, so it was a reference to... Yes, it is very personal. I mean, it's kind of... <laughs> is, it, is it scary to get this like very personal kind of details about yourself into a song and let everyone hear it? Um, You see, this is where like, why my favorite artists and their songwriting skills are what I admire. You may resonate with the song, but you, you're not la you're laying yourself out there in a way that people might not even understand. I mean, I'm talking about gingerbread man and ginger kisses and 007. It's like, is it ever making sense? You know, I'm spinning webs. <laughs> so in, in, a, in a way it's it's like laying yourself out there I guess or songwriting is laying yourself out there in a way that is that's a bit hidden I mean when you eh, I don't know yeah I think it's a safe way of laying yourself out there because if I am going through something, I'm not going to write, I'm going through this and I almost died. 
I may say, or um, I, I may say it was tough. I mean, it was tough. I nearly kicked the bucket. Oh, I like washing clothes. You did something. <laughs> Something a bit more uh, metaphorical, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Symbolism yeah. as well, yeah. Still yeah, wrote I, it alone. I'm guessing. So was it uh, was it intended like as a solo song, or was it intended to be played with uh, with Artwell? Um. Hmm. When I write, I think I don't write in terms of the. Hmm. The core of the song is always there, and then you can play it with a band and with harmonies. Because if I write something, I don't write the harmonies. I may write a bass line or two, and then write the rhythm. And then, like Slick is in Artwell's insane with harmonies. Like he is the harmony god, you know. So he typically does the harmonies. He, I learned. I basically learned to sing from him. He's like he's awesome. So. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't write a song like intended for me to sing. Frankly, even if the song is, I don't know. I never really feel like oh, vulnerable in this song. You know, uh-huh. if I write it, I, just, I think anyone can sing it. Like, I mean, always just sing it, sing it well, sing it beautifully, sing it, sing it. Just sing it with some something. <laughs> so, would you say that there's not necessarily that there's no personal connection, but more like um, you don't feel like you own the song, maybe? Um, like I don't own it emotionally. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, frankly, isn't, I don't know who said this, but or many people have said it. But the moment a writer releases a book. In a sense, that book is no longer theirs, right? Because you hear so many interpretations, and if you ask the writer, "Is that even what you meant?" They may even be like, "No, that's not what I meant," you know. But now you can't go and tell someone who just read your book and have created this world, and you want to go and break down their um, their world. No. So I would say I still have the original intention of the song. But then, anything that comes after is. Oh, I mean, I've never had the uh, I've never had the instance where someone is completely saying the song means this, you know. Yeah. But I guess if we do get bigger and we get more fans and stuff, I wonder if that might become a thing where people are taking your song and saying, "Yeah, it means this. It means that." Mm-hmm. Well, I guess you just have to live and see, but I kind of hope it does because I think it's interesting to see how other people understand what you created. Because it's also, you know, maybe they got something completely different out of it that you intended, but that's that's not bad. That's also very interesting, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's um. At times, yeah, you want you want your work with life to other stuff, you know. It shouldn't just end there. Frankly, if it's if it's open to a lot of in, if it's open, then you might get more derivatives from it, you know. Mm-hmm. I think if people can understand your work, I guess that's why people cover certain things. I mean, there are certain songs I don't even think about covering. There are songs I think about covering, probably because I. Found a connection with that, and whatever that connection is, might not even have been the one the writer had. But mm-hmm. so that open-endedness is really nice. Yeah, that's very beautiful. Um, and I really hope that people will find connections to your songs. 